Question 7. A. Translate shape P by the vector 5 minus 2. Now, don't get your transformations mixed up. You've got generally translate, that's the one when things go left, right, up and down, but don't change positions. Rotate, that's when it rotates clockwise, anticlockwise. You've got reflection where something is there and it gets reflected over there. And you've got enlargement. But this isn't about any of those, this is translate. Now that's a vector. The top number tells you how far left or right you're going to go. Left will be negative, right is positive. So that says we're going to move it 5 right. The bottom number is our up and down number. Up is positive, down is negative. So minus 2 means it's going to go down, minus 2. So what we do, just pick a corner. I'll uh, pick this corner here. We're going to go 5 right, 2 down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 down, 1, 2. So this is the top right hand corner of that shape. So it's going to go there, to 2 across there, same size as the original, 2 there, up there, up 1. Do you want me to label it? No, just leave it like that. Translate shape P by the vector. Done. B. Describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto B. Right, there's A. There's B. Now, obviously it's not translation. Now, the, the important thing is here. Single transformation. You've got a choice of translation, moving left and right, reflection, or rotation. Just one. You can't say, well, first of all you reflect it, then you've got to turn it, then you, you don't do any of that. You just do one thing. It's not translation. You, can, you should be able to look at it and see it's not a reflection. You should be able to look at that and see that it's actually a rotation. Now this question is three marks. To get three marks, you need to get the three main points. First mark is to say it's a rotation. Now, if you're doing this question, you should have tracing paper. Unfortunately, I haven't got any tracing paper. But if I did, I would put it on top, trace shape A, and then what I would do is find the center of rotation because The shape has been rotated around a certain pivot. You think about, for example, a roundabout down the park. The centre of rotation is the pole going through the middle. If I rotate that, it's going to land on top of that. So what you need to do, you put your tracing paper down, put your pencil on somewhere that's roughly in between the two, and I would probably put it there first of all. Turn it around, pushing the trace image, and hopefully it will land on B. And if you do that you will indeed find that the centre of rotation is at 0, 1. So you write that there. You don't actually have to write centre of rotation. Rotation gives you one mark. 0, 1, the coordinate of the centre, will give you another mark. And now you've got to say how far the rotation is. Uh, if you, on your tracing paper, you draw a little, drew a little arrow like that, when you turn the image, the arrow will turn as well, and when that lands on the other picture, you will see that this arrow is now pointing down, which means it has turned a full 180 degrees. Now you should be able to tell just by looking at it. A, there's A, look at it there, it's upside down. So it's 180 degrees. Because it's 180 degrees, you don't need a direction, as in clockwise or anticlockwise, because it's 180 degrees, so you get the same result if you went clockwise or if you went anticlockwise. So there's your three marks. Rotation, the centre of rotation, 0, 1, 
and 180 degrees.